I hope you are doing well and that you are in great health. Say this with me. <clears throat> Say the best <clears throat> for my life is yet to come. Say it again. Say the best for my life is yet to come. This morning I have a wonderful, as always, a wonderful and very anointed teaching that I've called the power of blessing. Say this with me. The power of blessing. Please speak with me as I ask you. The power of blessing. One more time. The power of blessing. Now when I talk about blessing this morning, I'm talking about a spoken blessing. In other words, when you speak a blessing, we can use the word blessing in many ways. You know, we bless people with money and we bless people with food and we bless people with gifts and, and that's part of sowing. But this morning I want to show you how important it is to speak blessing. One more time. The power of blessing. So many years ago, the Lord has spoken to me and said, I want you to bless my people. I've been doing that for many years. As a father is blessing his children. I love to speak blessing over the people of God. I do it on a daily basis. And this morning, we're about to receive great blessing out of the hand of God. Can you say amen? amen? What was the first thing that God did? The very first thing after He created Adam and Eve. What was the very first thing He did? The Bible says He blessed them. I want to show you. You can follow on the board. Genesis 1.28 says, and then God blessed them immediately. He blessed them and said to them. In other words, spoken blessing. A blessing by speaking. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. So don't worry some of you ladies now. You know your pastor. And you know he's flowing in miracles. Uh, if you don't need another child, don't be worried now. We won't prophesy to you this morning to get another child. But you can also be fruitful. Come on, in your body. You can be fruitful in your finances. Come on, say amen. You can be fruitful in your business, in your ministry. So he said, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. In other words, we have to rule over the dogs and the cat. They're not supposed to rule over you. Oh, there was a word for many of you. They're not supposed to become an idol. Rule over them. Mm, it's very quiet now. Love them, but rule over them. Mm? Okay. So the very first thing God did, He blessed. Think about this, come on. The creator of heaven and earth. He created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. And then He blessed them with his words now imagine with me for a moment what would happen if all our people yet yeah, were in spirit would start of the day every morning by blessing people Come on. 
And yet many people, Christians, curse themselves. And you don't see it as a curse because you think it's just words. But how, how do you think a blessing works? By words. How do you think a curse works? By words. So the Lord has shown me many Christians don't even need a witch or a Satanist. Think about this. Who curse Christians, who curse people because they curse themselves. By speaking words of death and negativity and, you know, many people say stuff like, they will never get far in this life and they speak sickness over themselves and they speak pain and disease over themselves. They speak poverty over themselves. In fact, they are cursing themselves. Imagine the church of our Lord Jesus Christ starts blessing themselves and people around him every single day the power of blessing so if it was so important to god the creator of heaven and earth if it was so important to him that's the first thing he did why don't we bless more come on why because sometimes people get so used to things they do used to curse they they get used to negative speaking Maybe you're going through a tough time and now out of your mouth comes words like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know what's going to happen. And it's, it's not blessing. It's like a curse. You will get exactly what you say. God created everything by what? Words. By His mouth. And I want to encourage you today. I want to teach you the power of blessing. Start blessing yourself. Come on, I've been teaching the church this for decades. Start blessing your body every morning. Instead of speaking stuff like, oh, this is not working again. Speak life. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Put your hands on yourself and say, bless my heart. That's what I do every single morning. Bless your heart, bless your lungs, bless your blood. Bless your kidney, bless your liver. Bless every part in your body. And speak life. And you will get what you say. The power of blessing. The Lord spoke to Abraham. Genesis 12, write this down. And he says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. Can you see? We serve a God who loves to bless. It's amazing to me. Throughout the Bible, I see how he loves to bless his people. At the other hand, you see how Satan, the devil, who hates people, loves to curse Now, some of you don't realize this, but let me help you. Every time when you curse, you do exactly what Satan does. Every time when you lie, you do exactly what Satan does. The Bible calls him the father of all lies. No, Pastor, it's only a white lie. What? What is a white lie? Let me ask you this. What is a white witch? You get white witches, you get black witches. Is there any witch here this morning? Any Satanist here? I pray that the fire of God will take you. And that you will give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, react. Pray that God will do something brand new in your life. Jesus loves you. Amen. There are witches this morning. Trust me now. On a Sunday morning. Sitting in a dark room. Speaking curses. Speaking curses over congregations, pastors, families, marriages, businesses. 
Check this out. They curse people on the road to make accidents. Some of you don't even know it. You see an accident and you wonder what happened. It's a curse. And I'm not going to teach on that now, but a curse will only get hold of you when there's an opening, when there's an open door. Otherwise, it will go back from where it came. Let me tell you something profound. Write this down. The power of blessing. The blessing is way stronger than the curse. Come on. The love of God is way stronger than hatred. Say with me, the blessing is stronger than the curse. He says, I will bless you, make you a great nation. Check this out. You will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. It's so important to him that we speak blessing. That he says, if you bless my anointed one, my friend, the Bible calls Abraham a friend of God. If you bless my friends, if you bless my children, I will bless you. It's so important to him. Now think for a moment. What happens in your heart when somebody blesses your kid? Makes you feel well. Hmm? If somebody says something nice about your children. As a father, as a mother, we love that because it's our children. How much more our heavenly father, come on, when we bless his people, when we bless his children. What would happen in the church? Come on, think with me this morning. If we can all start off our day by blessing, creating, speaking life. And you start with yourself because if you can't bless even yourself, how would you be able to bless other people? If you can't love yourself, how can you love other people? When you bless, it goes hand in hand with love. But now in the New Testament, Jesus says, bless even your enemies. Bless those who curse you. And that's not easy. And I can promise you, after this powerful word, your tests will come. People who say things about you. People who have offended you. And now you don't bless them anymore. No, I only do what the word says. I bless my enemies. I bless those who persecute me. I bless those who curse me. The Bible says God will curse those who curse me. I don't have to curse. In other words, he will deal with my enemies. Now you are wasting your time because you want to deal with your enemies. You're wasting your time. God will defend his anointed ones. God will defend his children. Why would you waste your time fighting with people who don't like you? Now you're thinking about that person. And you're thinking about that enemy. And it's all you do. You think about that person. No. Start blessing. The more I bless, the more he blesses me. So many years ago, the Lord said, I want you to bless my people. And I have been doing that for a long time. In a powerful way. Throughout the Bible, I see God will always use a father. He will always use, come on, a man or woman of God to bless his people. He still does. When last did you call your family together to bless them? Let me talk here to daddies and mummies. When last did you have a meeting where you say, I want you to come and visit and I just want to bless you? When last did you lay your hands on your children or grandchildren just to speak blessing? When last? So there's many examples in the Bible. Think about Isaac. How he blessed his two sons. Think about Jacob. How he blessed not only his children but also his grandchildren. He blessed them. He prophesied over them. I think about David who blessed his son. And he said, my son, come here. It's my time now. 
to die. God has chosen you to, to, to build a temple. And, but here are millions and millions of rands for you. What a daddy. You get many people. No, money is not important. What? You can't even bless nobody. Always poor. You think it's holy to be poor. No, it's not holy. It stinks. God wants his people, come on somebody, to be blessed. There's no daddy here this morning that say, I want my kids to be poor. To be sick. Where did they get that from? It's out of the hell. Poverty and sickness. That's why there's good news this morning. Jesus is alive and he's the answer. And I'm giving you a great answer. I'm giving you a tool. Start blessing with your mouth. Stop cursing yourself and others. So you don't agree with somebody and now you curse him. And you know what happens? What you sow, you reap. Now those curses come to you. The more I bless, the more I get blessed. And I love blessing his people because his people, check this out, are very important to him. I bless his church. His church is very important to him. That which is important to him must become important to me. The Lord spoke to Moses. Check this out. This is very profound. Number six. Write this down. And the Lord said to Moses, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Blessing. Words. And so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. God will always work through somebody. He will work through a voice to preach, to teach, to prophesy, and to bless. It's not just falling out of the sky. He works through a voice. Why do you think will the devil use demonic agents, satanists, witches? Let me, let me help you. I want you to think. Why would he use those people to speak words every day to curse? Because he understands the power of words. And yet many Christians don't understand it. Because when you feel a bit down, you speak negative things. You curse yourself. I get many people that say, no, pastor, I don't want to live long. What? You curse yourself. Well, the Bible says, I want to bless you with longevity. Can I get an amen? Yeah, I want to bless you with a long, fruitful life. Amen. And now you think you can say whatever you want. You will get whatever you say. Actually, I want to say, how dare you say anything that he doesn't say? Wow, Henry, that was a great point. Wow. How dare you say any negative thing towards somebody or for yourself and you know God doesn't say that. That's a curse. But sometimes we don't think like that because we think when we talk about curses, it's only, you know, demons and Satanists. No, many Christians curse themselves. When you feel something in your body, you speak stuff and you say, oh, you know, my grandma had this. This is coming from my, my mother's side. Mother-in-law. That doesn't sound right to me anyway. Law. We're not under the law anymore. Come on, we're under grace here. Monster-in-law. What about my mother-in-love? My mother in grace, can you say amen? amen? So it's so important to God, this power of blessing that he did it right in the beginning. And then he worked through many people. And now he spoke to Moses and said, I want you to bless my people, like my church. 
the Israelites was like the church in the Old Testament. Three million of his people. I want you to put this blessing on them. He will always work through a voice. He will always work through somebody that he has anointed. The blessing will always come through a father. That's nothing to do with age. I think about Paul. Every time in the New Testament when he ends a letter, he blesses the people of God and he says, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be worth you. Isn't that amazing? I love that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, check this out, the love of God the Father woo, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be worth you. Check this blessing. Every time when he ends a letter. I see the Lord Jesus loves to bless. He was teaching a whole chapter in the Bible, Matthew 5, about blessed are you. Blessed are you. I don't have time to go there. Blessed are you when you do this. Blessed are you. Blessing, blessing, blessing. So if we can follow his example, we will always be blessed. But many Christians fall into the trap by doing like the devil does. I want you to be teachable now. By cursing and by speaking negative things. And you can't understand why you don't see breakthrough. There's power in your words. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch your mouth this morning. If you can't say anything good, zip a lip. If you can't bless somebody, just keep quiet. Forgive those who have hurt you. Forgive those who have done you wrong. Don't curse. Be careful what you sow. So the Bible says Jesus blessed his disciples just before he went to heaven. Did you know that? Check this out. In Luke 24. And when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, check this out, he lifted up his hands, this is biblical what we do here, and blessed them. And while he was doing what? Come on, speak with me. While he was doing what? Blessing them. He left them and was taken up into heaven. The first thing God did after he created mankind, he blessed. The last thing Jesus did before he went into heaven, the very last thing is he blessed. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The first thing God did, he blessed. The last thing before he left for heaven, he blessed. And yet many Christians don't bless nobody, never. They just think about themselves. Now I'm preaching. Bless me, 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 my, me, us four, no more. While the Lord says, I want you to bless. What you sow, you will reap. He wants us to sow. He wants us to bless people with money. When last did you bless people with money? What you sow, you reap. You say, Lord, bless me with money, but you never sow money. When last did you bless somebody with food? Hmm? With, with a nice dinner? When last? What you sow, you reap. Now the same with words that we speak. When you bless with words, you will be blessed. Forgive those who hurt you. Come on, forgive those who has offended you. Don't take offense, man. Come on, get over your Many people take offense all the time. Pastors need to deal with this all the time. Get over yourself. Take the focus of yourself. Take it off and put it on Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and worship Him. Love Him. Glorify Him. Magnify Him. Otherwise, you're going to get offended every time He did that and He said that and oh, shame. 
You need to die to yourself. Get out of yourself. The power of blessing. This is amazing to me, what He has shown me. The first thing He blessed, the last thing before He went to heaven, is blessing people. If we can start our day by blessing our bodies, you bless your brain, you bless your eyes, you bless your ears, you bless your blood, you bless your bones, you bless your legs, you bless your, le your hands, you bless your work, you bless your ministry, you bless your business, bless your marriage, bless your children, bless your grandchildren, you will change the atmosphere for the day. And when you meet with those people, you can say, my Lord, I've blessed them already. Some of you, you see that enemy in your mind all the time, somebody that hurt you. And you're thinking of that person the whole day. You can't do anything else. So the devil binds you with that. You're just thinking of that person. Instead of blessing him and let him go. As I was praying in the week, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to gather the family. And I want you to bless them. I do this every now and then. In fact, I do it on a daily basis. I do it on... A weekly basis. Come on, we bless you all the time. This morning, two services. Tonight, service again. I'll bless you again. But this is very special. In line with the word this morning. To teach you the power of blessing. I'm going to release a blessing now over you. How many of you want the blessing? And did you know that God will always bless through somebody he has anointed. So write this down. You cannot receive. Some of you, you must bring your pain. You must bring something. Be a student of the word. You cannot receive from an anointing which you criticize. If you criticize the man of God in your life, you will not receive the blessing that is on his life. You know, it's like a child. He wants his daddy to bless and protect and provide. And it's, it's lacking in daddy's house. But he speak all kinds of things against them. The fatherly blessing comes. You cannot receive from an anointing. Listen to this revelation. If you don't submit to that anointing. And it's like people who say, bless me, bless me, I love the Lord. But they never put God first. They never pay the Lord's tithe. They never sow. But they want to be blessed. The Lord says, I will never bless disobedience. Never. In fact, the word says, if you love Jesus, you will obey Him. It's God's will for His people, come on, to become mature. To grow. You cannot say for 30, 40 years in church, I love Jesus, but you never obey His word. What will you say when you are going to stand before Him one day? He will only bless his word. So to receive from an anointing, you have to submit. You can't criticize a person, but yet at the same time you want his blessing. That was great right there. Great point, Henry. Great point. So this morning, I want to release this power of blessing over you. I'm not going to tell you how to react. Some of you need to jump. Just don't break our chairs. Some of you need to run forward. Some of you need to react. You will always react when you take something. Don't tell me you react by just... Some of you, I look at you, you see. That's why never happens. Never, nothing happens <clears throat> to a person who will not react by faith. In revival, we need to react. Come on. When you receive your healing, you need to react. When you receive blessing, you need to react. You need to sow. You need to react. You need to do something as He leads you. Here it goes. So this morning... 
I'm going to bless you in this new season. This is a very, very powerful morning. and You are very blessed to be here. In the name of Jesus, as your spiritual father, I bless you with a long life and with good health. Some people, they jump up now. There's some people, they start reacting. I'm waiting on you. I bless you with creativity and with, oh, a godly mind so that, so that lots and lots of money can come in for the kingdom of God. I bless your brain. I bless your mind. Take it now. I bless your body with complete healing, health in Jesus' mighty name. I bless your family, I bless your marriage, I bless your children, I bless your grandchildren. I speak a word of blessing over your family and I pray in Jesus' name as I bless you that reconciliation will take place within your house. I bless you with peace. Take it now, react now. I bless you with joy and love and that you will grow spiritually. And that you will experience the presence of God and revival in your life like never before. I bless you with more anointing, with wisdom, with creativity. I bless every part of your life. I bless you with victory in Jesus' name, in your finances. I bless you that you will get to a place where you will become wealthy in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with prosperity and with financial freedom. Everybody, lift your hands and react in this house. I bless your business. I bless your ministry. I bless your involvement in this house so that you can go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. I bless you in the name of of Jesus Christ as a father bless his children I bless all my spiritual children with divine protection hallelujah I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over you and your family I speak blessing to word and spirit and I say this house and ministry is extremely blessed by God all the days of our lives Woo! Every curse coming against us will go back from where it came in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No accidents will come near us. Come on. We just cancel every satanic plan. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. All the days of your life. May you prosper. May you grow. May all your children be saved. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Clap for Jesus. Come on.